We got big takeaways from Rams training camp and new details about Matthew Stafford's adjusted contract. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast covering your Los Angeles Rams. Free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, do us a huge favor and subscribe to the Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Trying to get to 14K by the opening game, so definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and let us know what is your biggest takeaway so far from Rams training camp. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade, 24-7 sports, Bleacher Report, SI, Dodgers Nation, the Rams for Locked On. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station. You've probably seen him at Rams camp for this first couple of weeks. Mr. Travis Rogers, you can follow him on the X at Travis Rogers. And on today's episode, we are talking Matthew Stafford's contract once again, somehow, some way, and also... Big takeaways from Rams camp. What is going on at Rams camp? We're going to talk about that. Some big nuggets to get into. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or long or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, Travis. So, we got to talk about Matthew Stafford's contract once again because there was yeah. some more new information that was reported. It was a little different from what we originally heard. So Tom Pelissaro of the NFL Network, he reported that Stafford really just gave up his guarantees in 2025 and will play 2024 on a one-year deal worth essentially $40 million. That includes a $12.5 million signing bonus, a $23.5 million in guaranteed salary for the year, and a $4 million guaranteed March roster bonus. So reason why this is interesting is because it doesn't really indicate a strong commitment for Matthew Stafford and the Ram following this season. I think what this really indicates is that if he has a great year, they get back to that negotiating table and they find a new deal. But it's not like it's the same deal we saw that was originally reported. No, I think what I think what you said is is right. I think what this is is Matthew Stafford betting on himself a little bit and the Rams buying themselves a little bit of time. I think that both people, both sides kind of get what they need out of this. This is the Rams can get another look at, at what they have, not just at the quarterback position, but what they have kind of globally speaking as far as uh the, you know, the roster goes and everything else. And I think what Matthew Stafford gets is he gets more guaranteed money this year and if it hits, he can really hold their feet to the fire. That if, if he goes out there and, and has a big year, he can come back and get a lot. And who knows for how long, right? I think this is him betting on himself. I think this is the Rams buying themselves a little bit at a time. And if it works out, I think it probably works out for both. If the Rams struggle for whatever reason, if Matthew Stafford starts to show uh, some decline in his performance, then I think it's a different conversation at the end of the year moving forward. But I don't suspect really either of those things happening. I think this just gives the Rams a little bit of time to figure out what they want to do financially, and it gives Matthew Stafford a chance to get a big, big bag a year from now. Yeah, and it feels like what happened was possibly the Rams didn't want to guarantee more money past the 2024 season, so Stafford was just like, okay, then I'll just get more money this season, and then I'll put myself in an even better spot to get myself a bigger bag, like you mentioned. So, yeah, I do find it interesting. If it's not here, you know, and if the Rams don't want to do that, and he's coming off of a big season, there will be a line of teams that think that, okay, we are a quarterback away, and we've seen what he can do in one year and come in and knock it out of the park. I would hate to see that happen. I I, I want to see Matthew Stafford end his career as a member of the LA Rams, but if he does have a great year and the Rams, for whatever reason, decide that that's not the future that they want to, to, to step into, there will be a, a line of people looking to give him a lot of money. Yeah, that's what makes this year so fascinating is with Aaron Donald retiring, with the new guys plugged in on defense, you need to see 
how much growth you get from them in year one and what that defense even looks like under yeah. Chris Shula. And then how does that revamp offensive line play? Does Kyron Williams build on last season? What do you get from Blake Corm? Does Puka Nakua avoid a sophomore slump? How much do you get out of Cooper Cup? I think the more you kind of break down this team, the more you realize, wow, it could go a lot of different ways this year. Yeah, and it really does kind of start with Stafford, right? Because if he's good and he's healthy, I think a lot of those other things kind of take care of themselves. You know, I think I have a hard time envisioning where Matthew Stafford's having a really good year and Puka Nakua isn't. I have a really hard time envisioning Matthew Stafford looking like the best version of himself and Cooper Cup really struggling or Kyron Williams not able to get going or the tight ends not kind of, you know, starting to flourish a little bit. All the things that we've talked about. Now, the opposite is true as well, right? If he's not quite right, if he starts to show his age, then all that other stuff is just, you know, here, here we go. Oh, what's wrong with Puka? What's wrong with Cup? What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? Well, what could be wrong with it is the quarterback's not doing what he needs to do. The offensive line maybe isn't giving him the protection that he needs. But, like, we've been talking about this, Doug, really since the end of last season, and certainly as we're getting closer and closer to the beginning of this season. The, the future of the Rams, the window of the Rams for the longest time was 99, was what does Aaron Donald do? How much does he have left? How good of a player can he be? For how long of a period of time can he be that player? And when he decided to walk away, it went to nine. It, it, it went to Matthew Stafford, and he is the window right now, and they're going to throw everything they have at it now, and, and even more so with the details of this deal. Yeah, exactly. And if you look at the year he had last season, he was really outstanding when he was on the field, missed some time, but really in 15 games, I mean, a 63 and a half QBR, I mean, 2021 was a little higher, but also the interceptions were down. I mean, back yeah. in 2021, he had 17 interceptions that led the league. I think you could make the case that last year was the best version of Matthew Stafford as a Ram just because you didn't have the peak version of Cooper Cup. It wasn't the yeah. team that was built to win a Super Bowl. You didn't have a left tackle like Andrew Whitworth. So I think for what he did for this team last season, when really putting them on his back, I think we see that this year he's going to be rewarded. But I also want to say that, one thing that organizations do that get themselves into trouble is work past due contracts, right? right? And this allows them to maintain flexibility and Matthew Stafford too. It, for sure. It was funny. So out at camp today, uh, you know, they just had a walkthrough and, and, you know, they're going, you know, I don't even want to say they're going half speed. They're not even going half speed. They're going like third speed, but you can just tell that when Matthew Stafford is out there working with that first team, Everything just, just you can just, there's a lightness to it. There's a crispness to it. There's just this understanding that we've got one of those guys. We've got a guy that can fix a lot of other problems. We've got a guy that if something breaks down, can win us a game or two just simply because he's that good. There aren't a lot of teams that have that. And, and, and here we go again, right? This is going to be on his right arm. If he's good, they got a really good chance. If he's not, it gets real tough real fast, and you're like everyone else in the league. But for at least one more year, they're not like everyone else in the league. They got a very, very special guy at that spot. Yeah, I think when you hear his teammates speak so glowingly about him, Matthew Stafford is always talked to by his coach in Sean McVay, but it just feels like he hasn't missed a beat, that he's as sharp yeah. as he was last season, and when number nine is healthy, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, you, you 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 touched on a really important part. I think that the relationship between McVeigh and Stafford is a huge. They see football the same. They, they they understand one another. It's like they they speak the same language. They can the relationship is is functional and that they can collaborate. They can disagree. Feelings don't get in the way. I think Sean McVeigh knows how hard it is to be a good quarterback in this league. I think Sean McVeigh does everything he can to support Matthew Stafford. And he understands that I have a guy that can do what I'm asking him to do, that understands what I'm asking him to do. And I think that Matthew Stafford understands I got a special head coach. I got a guy that, that is trying to do everything he can to put me in a, a position to succeed. He knows what the opposite of that looks like. He spent a long time in his career with the opposite of that, with coaches that maybe weren't that, with front office that maybe wasn't that, ownership that wasn't that. So that that relationship, I think, if, if you're trying to project forward and what it looks like beyond the 2024 season, and, and, and as long as he continues to play at a high level, I think that they'll continue to work together because they both know that finding the other guy isn't really very easy to do at all. 
Yeah, and that's why I have so much confidence that he's going to end his career as a Ram because of Sean McVay. Because so. McVay's re-energized. He said it almost feels like his first training camp, things like that, just because he's so dialed in. Yeah. And without and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact he knows what he has in Matthew Stafford. That's a rookie quarterback that he has to go through that whole process with. I don't think he's going to feel the same way. I will say, too, Travis, ever since our episode on Matthew Stafford in the Hall of Fame, I've turned into this like Matthew Stafford evangelist. <laughs> to put him in the Hall of Fame. I've had arguments with so many people about him in the Hall of Fame. So I want to see him achieve that as a Ram. And he's got some work to do to be a lock. I still think if you ride tired today, you can make the case that he's in. But hopefully a couple more really great years, a couple more great Super Bowl runs, and he's in yep. Canton. But coming up next, we got more camp takeaways. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. All right, Major League Baseball season is in full swing right now, right? The Dodgers, well, let's not talk about them, at least right now, right? It's a good long way to go. They're going to get healthier. Everything will be fine. But even if your team isn't maybe firing on all cylinders, it's still a great time to go to the ballpark, right? And this is where the Game Time app comes in because Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app? They go down the closer you get the first pitch. Think about that, right? You're getting closer. You wait a little bit longer. Bam, there's that great deal right on the Game Time app. You can absolutely find the game you're looking for, the seat you're looking for. You get a view from your seat and the all-in pricing guarantee. I love that, right? Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all sorts of great features on that Game Time app. But the thing I love the best, you can save up to 60% buying last-minute tickets for sports, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, you name it. But you got to have the app on your phone, right? So take the guesswork out of buying your Major League Baseball tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we are off and running here on Locked on Rams. Thank you for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single weekday. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Locked on Rams, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, a special shout out to those every listeners out there watching and listening to every single episode of Locked on Rams. Travis will be at camp, so definitely go and find him. Talk to him about the show, talking about your Rams, and also join that club. Join the Every Listener's Club because we're getting so close to preseason action. It feels like football is finally back and going to be a jam-packed great season, and we got you covered Monday through Friday here on Locked on Rams. But all right, Travis, here in our second segment, really want to shine a light on Braden Fisk because yeah. Jared Verse, he's the top guy. He was their first-round pick, but the Braden Fisk trade-up, is really going to be something we might talk about for a long, long time because that was the most expensive day two overpay in the last six drafts. The Rams traded 52, 155, and a two, 2025 second rounder to Carolina for the number 39 pick. That is a haul to get Braden Fisk. And so far, based on what we've heard the coaches and players say about him, it feels like that was the right choice. I feel like this is where I'm contractually obligated to point out that anybody that says that something was overpaid, underpaid, pick too high, pick too low, come back at me in three years. Nobody yeah. knows anything, right? The, dra the draft stuff is impossible to project until we see this play. Now, that being said, everybody I talked to at camp, watching him, looking at him, this is a real dude. Like, this is a real dude. And his teammates, you can tell the way that they're responding to him, the way that they're talking about him. I think that the Rams may have, in fact, not only maybe not overpaid, they may have gotten the steal, right? So if this thing turns out to be the player, if, he, if he's the player that you think that he might be, that the Rams are hoping that he might be, this could be somebody that we're talking about, like you mentioned, for a very long time. He's one of those guys that just seems to play really, really fast. He's very physical. He's a physical specimen. So he, of all the rookies that they've had so far, like you mentioned, you know, Jared Verse, the V8 is there. They're trying to get that to stick out of camp a little bit. He's got number eight. But uh, Braden Fisk has looked uh, remarkable. And just looking at him, he looks like the real deal. Yeah, that's not to say that you're not going to start to hear a lot of great things about Jared Verse, but yeah. certainly early on, Braden Fisk yep. has made a massive impact on the coaches, on his teammates, and Sean McVay said that he is really doing a great job against Steve Avila. He said, I felt Braden Fisk these first couple of days. I think he has done a great job from learning from OTAs, then being able to apply just some of his plans with his hands, understanding of where he fits 
where the opportunities arise. He also said that Fisk has won his share of reps against Avila at center. And again, it's the speed that really stands out. So I think that's one thing that really makes a big impression on me is the speed at that position. Because one thing that made Aaron Donald so special, freakish speed. No one's comparing anyone to Aaron Donald because that is a superhero, right? He's not from right. this planet. But <laughs> that's how guys that size, they have freakish speed and the ability to win with their hands. And that's why I think Braden Fisk, it's going to be a transition for him to the NFL because of that talent level. Yeah, it's funny. I'm glad you brought up Aaron Donald in this context because it, it, it's funny being out of camp and talking with people, listening to people. You can't go 10 minutes without his name coming up. It's probably not even 10. It's probably not even five minutes before somebody will mention, how do you replace Aaron Donald? How much do you miss Aaron Donald? Is Aaron Donald coming back? What sort of void does he leave in the locker room, the weight room, and the, you know, the, the film, all, all of these things because he checked all of those boxes. I think that we all, as Rams fans, as people that care about this team and watch this team, need to be really careful about evaluating anybody in relation to Aaron Donald. Right. It's just it is just such a, an impossible standard to meet that Braden Fisk is not going to be Aaron Donald. That doesn't mean he can't be awesome for all the reasons that you mentioned. He is big. He is fast. It looks like he plays pretty well in tight spaces, like you mentioned, which is something that Aaron Donald was amazing at. So I'm really high on him. But I think it's going to be really I think we need to look at this defense collectively to replace Aaron Donald and not even just one or two or three players, but all 11 guys on that side of the ball are going to have to cover for Aaron Donald at some point. Yeah, I think one word that I've heard to describe Fisk is workaholic. And yeah. he, you saw Jared versus interview with JB Long on the Rams channel. And mm -hmm. they talked about how when they used to challenge each other at Florida State. And there was one time where Jared versus was leaving and, and Fisk was putting more work. He's like, oh, you done? That's it? Yeah. And then Fisk put the pass back on. Then, okay, I got to put in some more work. So I think when you combine that with just the explosiveness that he has and the fact that, look, if we're going to do winners and losers for the first week of training camp, I think he's a big winner just yeah. because of how much he's impressed. And honestly, those are lofty expectations. You're getting, sure. you're trying to follow up on an Aaron Donald led defense. You, they trade up for you all the way up to 39 and the biggest overpay in quite some time. He knows the expectations and to kind of build on the OTAs and to already hit the ground running. It really says a lot because let's be honest. There is not just pressure on this Rams team. There's a lot of pressure on rookies and second and third year players. That's why it's such a, even Kobe Turner, he found it last yeah. year, second year player. We'll see how he plays without Aaron Don. We'll see if Bobby Brown can truly emerge into the player they hope that he can be. As a run stopper, I think he can be that guy. But BY, Byron Young as well. So that's what's so fascinating about this team. You have young players that have to make an impact, and then you have a brand new defensive coordinator. I think it cannot be overstated just how much of an X factor the entire defense is and just how many questions we're going to have answered early on this season. And what they do is they take guys that are – like you tied the, the story about Verse and Fisk at Florida State, and are you done? Are you going to come back and do more? They don't They don't have a bunch of guys on this team. And, I, and let me be very clear about how I say this. I'm not saying these guys don't have a ton of talent. They do. But they don't have guys that just get by on talent. They have guys that get by on talent and work and study and effort and professionalism and dedication, and they draft guys like that. I think that's a big part of what they go into when they're evaluating these players. And I know a lot of teams say that, but it's not. A lot of teams don't actually do it. The Rams do do it. Talking with them, well, they, well, you know, the other thing they do is they draft older players too. They like guys that have been on a college campus for four years. They typically don't draft a ton of underclassmen. They go and they get the guys that are professionals, even before they're professionals. And I think that Fisk fits right into that mold. Yeah, and that's something that I think is so important is when I the pick was originally made and the Rams trade up, some people freaked out a little bit. I mean, I'm for me, it's I'm freaking out if you don't make that play because how many opportunities are you going to have in the history of the NFL with a defense that needs to be rebuilt on the fly because of an unexpected retirement to the best yeah. defensive player in the game? You get two top players from the same defense in the same program that really was on a national championship level their time there. So I think it was a great opportunity. I do too, and and they they had no choice, right? They needed to rebuild the defense, like you said. This is something that had to get done. This is an impossible player to replace with one player, two players, three players. It's going to take an entire team, and like we've talked about a lot, a new defensive coordinator. I don't think that that can go by the board too many times without being pointed out. And you know, it it's 
I, I don't know quite how to say this without having it sound negative, and I don't want it to sound negative, but when you watch these practices, when you watch these, there is a Raheem Morris energy that does not exist with Chris Shula. And that doesn't mean that he's not going to do a good job. That does not mean that he can't have his own style and his own way of going about these things. But Raheem's presence was felt across the field. We'll see what happens next. Yeah, and if you guys haven't, go watch Travis's interview with Ernest Jones. And you talk about Chris Shula, and I definitely, one of my big takeaways from that interview was how high he was on him. So, yeah. I mean, when you have yeah, your position, I'll, I'll guys, you, Mac, I spoke with Quentin Lake today, and he said the same thing. Like, they, they like Chris. They are at least telling us that they like Chris Shula. We'll see what it looks like. But this was not – nobody's talking about, oh, we really miss Raheem Morris. I'm sure they do, but this was not a – man, I missed you, my, my ex. This is a, no, we got a really good guy doing this. And both guys have brought it up uh, when asked, and both guys brought it up unprompted. So I think that's promising. Yeah, and I think, too, at the end of the day, when it comes to Chris Shula, yeah, he's not going to have that magnetism that a Raheem Morris has, because let's be honest, not a lot of guys do, right. right? That's a rare trait. But where he can win his players and fans over in this organization is with the clipboard, is with the X's and O's. And I think one thing the players appreciate about him is that he puts them in positions to have success. He knows how to optimize his guys. So I think at the end of the day, that's where he's going to hang his hat, on the tactician side of it. And we'll spend a whole segment on Chris Shula, because I think that's yeah. absolutely one of the top five, at the very least, big topics heading into the season but coming up next we're talking more rams training camp that's coming up next on locked on rams all right so we are in the middle of baseball season doug loves baseball i love baseball but we're not quite in the meat of it where everything's going on and we love sports we love them so much that you never want them to stop but we're in kind of that weird calendar part of the year and it's not quite as active as you want them to as i want them to but fanduel FanDuel keeps the sports going whenever I want, whenever you want. All you have to do is open up the FanDuel app and dream up bets any time that you're in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel's hooking us all up. They're hooking all customers up with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And look, you might get a little bit better value on, oh, I don't know, the National League West race that the value that was there a few weeks ago, a few months ago, might not quite be the same. So go to FanDuel, check out the numbers for yourself. FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Yeah, by the end of this episode, the Padres might already be in first place in the, the NOS objects in the rear or closer than they appear for sure. I mean, they're coming up, but welcome back to Locked On Rams. And yeah, we're talking Puka Nakua, sophomore slump. Can you avoid that? We're going to talk about that tomorrow because got some in-depth stuff on that. But I think we got to talk about special teams. And yeah. we know how hard you, how high you are on Josh McCarty out of Stanford and just how this team, they need a trusted Somebody. kicker, a dependable kicker. But... Don't sleep on Tanner Brown. Tanner Brown has continued to impress. Chase Blackburn said he's done well. And about Cardi, he said, once we get to the actual uprights, that's one of the issues here. We just haven't been able to get the uprights in. So we all have the skinnies. It's going to look huge when we get to SoFi. So it's still a little premature, but I do just kind of want to point out the fact that this is not a job they're just going to give to Joshua Cardi. He has to earn it, and Tanner Brown is doing everything he can to take it. I, okay, so I, I agree with you. I, I think that he's, I think Josh Cardi is going to be the kicker for this team, but I like that they're not giving it to him. I like that they're making him earn it because. First of all, I don't think that you can simulate the pressure of a real NFL game until you're in a real NFL game. I'm sure there'll be a little bit of juice flowing through them when they play those preseason games, but we all know those don't matter. He knows they don't matter. And and, and I don't think that he's going to feel the same amount of adrenaline that comes along until you get to that first game against the Detroit Lions. But the closer you can get to simulating that, I think the better you're going to have an understanding of what sort of guy that he is. So push him, right? Have other guys in camp that are going to push him. Put put as much pressure as humanly possible on him to see how he responds because until you have to make one when it matters, nobody knows how anything's going to look. For sure. And I think the fact that you went out there and you had time to bring in someone else, but you still drafted a kicker yeah. in the sixth round, it tells you that, one, you scouted him in depth, and you felt like he could be the guy. And two, you're not just you're not hoping that he's going to be one of these 
Jason Elam types, right? One of these great elite kickers. You just wanted to make the routine plays. The Rams had 11 missed kicks last season. That was two more than any other team in the National Football League. They also led with attempts at 43. So with Luke Havrasic and Brett Maher, you just never had that confidence that you really needed to. If this team is truly serious about making a deep run, really solidifying the kicker spot is going to go a long way. There's no question about it. I, I, I We know how it came apart in Detroit at the end with some of the decision-making that was a direct result of not having faith in the kicker. Um, you Again, like you said, DMAC, this is not a, a situation where you need to go find the, the next guy that can make 60-yard field goals. There are not a lot of Justin Tuckers out there that you're going to go find. Make kicks that you should make. And I think that's what they're looking for. If you get a guy that can maybe stretch this out beyond 50 yards, and Carter has shown some leg in college before, uh, great, that's awesome. But what needs to get made needs to get made. Sean McVeigh was talking about there's no question about how we need to get better at that. It, it really affected what they do. It affects play calls. It affects a million different things. And, again, it, the, the 48 and under – those need to be just about automatic. And if you're not, then I think you're on the clock because the Rams saw what it looks like when you don't have that guy last year. And I'd be really surprised if they just let that thing cook for a while. I think they'll have a much quicker trigger or a quicker trigger this year. I do too. And I saw the thing too. They realize that you can get young players. You can develop on the special team side yeah. early, the early calls on Ethan Evans is that he's looked outstanding so far and they yeah. found him last season. I think that he's going to be the punter for a long time. Yep. And I think Joshua Cardi this year is going to be the kicker they hit on. So you got Ethan Evans as your punter last year. You got your kicker this year and Joshua Cardi, by the way, speaking of Ethan Evans, I don't know if you check the schedule for Wingate, but August 31st, they open up against UNC Pembroke. Yeah. And the Brave Hawk. So that's appointment television. So go Wingate. We always support you, man. I believe UNC Pembroke, of course, is the home of one River Ryan. I believe that's uh, his oh, alma mater. You, man. So, so it all it all comes back together. There it is. Go. Everything's connected. And we didn't even yeah. talk about Larry David at Rams camp. We'll talk about that tomorrow, man, for <laughs> sure. But that's going to do for this episode of Locked On Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And you can follow the People's Champ, Mr. Travis Rogers, at Travis Rogers. And until next time, whose house? It's Locked On Rams house.